dialed. What we got here is some damaged hardware. This is gonna ride so goofy. Oh. Oh. On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are back working on our three engine mini bike. In today's episode, we should have a runner and a rider. In fact, we are not far. We need to weld in our engine plates and figure out the spacing. We need to run our chains and our clutches, which is going to be interesting. And we need to hook up three throttles into one twist grip, which is going to be interesting. So we have a lot to figure out. Let's get right to it so we can get to wheelie time. So one of the first things we're gonna do is replace our axle hangers. Ike decided we needed something slotted and we needed something beefier. And it was an opportunity for me to fix the, the circumference of the circle as well. Yeah. So let's knock those out real quick and, and tack in the new ones oh. just so we can get it off the list. I mean, I was looking forward to Gap welding. Gap welding that. I know you, I know you buddy. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll have it's plenty okay. of opportunity. <laughs> Maybe one day we won't be doing that anymore. It'll be a sad day. I know. You can't forget where you came from. Oh! That's what's going to be looking you know like when all three engines are on, man. Camming, baby. Who put this in here? Why in the world? Alright, Ike welded it in here. I'm blaming it on him. That was the worst. I think I know why Ike decided to come on and head this way. Because he wants to play in the snow. Don't don't let that number fool you. He's a bigger kid than all of us. <laughs> Even really miles. Is, Even dude. miles, I swear. <laughs> But that's okay. I, I don't have to change Ike's diaper. Thank goodness. Not yet. <laughs> Not Cars yet. and cameras, year 2050. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Retirement home. All of us. Oh, yeah. Dialed. Charles did a good job tacking in our uh, axle hangers there. So now we're going to move on to the engine plates. And what we've done, it's really faint, but we've drawn a Sharpie line. That ex should be exactly yeah. in the center of our tube, and we're gonna we're gonna tack those sides of our engine plates, and then kind of skew them up with a screwdriver, and then give them a tack over here once we figure out the level. Yeah, of course and this lift is good, but it's it's not a level surface. No, it. Well, we're working on it. Don't worry. This is our fab table. This is way better than the concrete. Yeah. And at least at least the top, like if we check the level of the table and then check, the, and those two match. Yep. That's, that's close enough. So oh, go ahead and put yeah. it exactly on the line, dude. Let me take my helmet off so I can get my big head in here. Block the shot, you know. Oh, you got it, man. There we go. <laughs> All right. So it's in the way. Or no, it's in, it's right in the right it's in the right spot. Now, I need a third hand attack. How do I? How That's do we, where I come in. How do we do this? Look at that. Doesn't look too bad. I Let's think get it's, that I other think it's side. ready to get tacked on the other side. Sweet. That's one of three. One down, two to go. Let's get it done. So, we just spent the last few minutes talking with the microphone off, uh, but also trying to center up the tire, uh, putting the engines on, dropping bolts in, putting our uh, our double tooth clutches on, uh, trying to s just double check that everything lines up before we yeah. give it a full send. Exactly. It's a lot of horsepower. We don't want to like overlook anything, especially like when, when Ike goes to test it. <laughs> So we need to convert this to 35 sprocket because, uh, well, a 420 um, sprocket like that does not simply exist. So. It looks like we're going to have to maybe drill a few holes or make an adapter. Make a big old adapter that has lots of surface area so it'll be safe. Yeah, that'll work. So, and then we got to just see if our sprocket alignment still works out, which I'm sure it'll be just fine. 
what we got here is some damaged hardware. So we borrowed this from our MB200, which has like three mini mayhems and a ton of miles on it. And every time the chain popped off, it either went behind it or in front of it, and it took a little chunk out of the out of the hardware. So I've, that's my job to try and get this out, and we're gonna replace it. But I'll throw them in the trophy bin, so be on the lookout. Oh boy. There's not much left. No, yeah, Mother There's not Nature. Much meat, there's not much meat left on that bone. Mother Nature t decided that it's not a 12, it's not a 13, it's not a half. It's a vice grip. It's a vice grip. He had to make a snow angel out yeah, of it. Yeah, I had. I really did. I've never made one. <laughs> it was more of an ice angel, but still an angel. And even the inside, even the inside ones are kind of chewed up. It's crazy how much damage just the chain will cause. All right. That's been on there a while. Yeah, that's definitely not going <laughs> to bolt on, but uh, we have okay. to, we have to try. Uh oh. The center doesn't even fit. Oh, you, mean you know what that get... means. The Dremel. The stinking Dremel tool. <laughs> it looks like we're going to have to build an adapter bracket to mount our sprocket to our wheel. And we're going to do that rather than use small washers because it just gives more of a surface area for the sprocket and wheel to meet. Uh, Charles is looking for some big old washers that we can put down and drill holes in. But I'm going to go ahead and draw up some plans and uh, make it in my software so we can go ahead and cut it out as a backup plan on the Crossfire Pro. But this looks good. Didn't even think about our gearing ratio and Charles has the other sprocket. So I'm going to get to drawing and it uh, shouldn't be too hard to get this lined up and going. Last night I got our sprocket adapter cut out and the boys already set it up and installed it in the bike and everything is looking good. Now it's time to run our chain. So we're using these really funky clutches from Go Power Sports. It's a max torque and it has two sets of sprockets on it. Uh, we don't know what this is originally used for, but for this build, we're using it to daisy chain all these engines together. So we're gonna have one sprocket connecting to the one sprocket on the engine behind, and then the second sprocket on the engine behind is gonna go to the first sprocket on the engine behind, and then the second sprocket on that one is gonna go to the axle. So they're all getting put together. Wait, we don't actually need a double sprocketed one on the first one, but we're gonna use it anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the only other time we've seen this is on a Colt mini bike that we picked up in Texas at Go Power Sports years ago, and it was actually used for a two-speed transmission. Really, really cool old mini bike. You can check out this clutch at a link in the description. It is from Go Power Sports, uh, as well as the tilts and 212s, the seats, the handlebars, all the parts that we're using in this project. And any time you place an order to Go Power Sports, let them know cars and cameras sent you at checkout. So, uh, I'm gonna get this put on here, and we can run a chains. We actually found the Colt mini bike at the Pate Swap Meet in Texas. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. I think it still lives at Go Power Sports. It lives at Go Power Sports. And that was when you could buy a mini bike at a good price. For 200 bucks. Yeah, because yeah. I paid 200 bucks. And that, and that thing ran, and, it ran. and it's pretty much all there. Yeah. Like all original hardware. So that's that. It's a cool bike. That's a thousand dollar mini bike now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I know this is gonna be a bad joke, but there's so many chains on this thing. It looks like it looks like uh, you're setting up a was it like one of them things in the middle of the mall, selling chains. Oh no. Oh. The... <laughs> like gold. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, even both sides of it. It's just a crazy concept to see three of the same thing. <laughs> it got heavy. She got heavy. <laughs> you don't say. Don't talk about her. It's like inline that. three, man. Of course it's heavy. Right. Oh my gosh. It's a 600 street bike. <laughs> this thing's just like this thing's a 600. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it just hit him. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Chunk. What do we, what do we, uh... Well, that's so weird to see. Oh, chunk, chunk. Oh, it was the front for some reason. Oh. oh where's it going to be? Oh. Hold on. 
Oh, that, okay. Yeah, because now only one of them's jumping. Once I kept, once I got this one to stay still. Let me try to spin it the other way. This is the yeah, that's the way we needed to go. Okay. Not yeah, I think, I think the ma look they, in the instructions it tells you how to put the master links. Uh -huh. So, because when the chains pass by each other, they oh, did I do it they wrong? Can unlink each other. Oops. And okay. I think we may have done one of them wrong. You know how they say, like, like we always throw instructions away. Yeah. Maybe we should. Read Maybe them. we should. Yeah. Sure. What we figured is that our master link, you can see right there in the center of the screen needs to face the other way. So it, that basically the master links can't face each other because they do stick out a little bit farther than the other part of the chain. And they were coming into contact with each other. Contact. So two out of three have to get flipped around. No big deal. And you know what? It, it, it won't uh, oh, no. come in contact on every uh, rotation. Because it's they, only right there. They, own, they. they might have to rotate 20, 30 times before they come in contact again. And I bet you we could set them up to where they would almost not inter interfere. Well, these would be fine because they're the exact yeah. same length, but those... You, those there's, two, eventually yeah. it would... They're going to whack. Yeah. All right. Cool. Who finished first? Well, I had to go get a flathead. What did you use? Oh, well, you had my pliers. He touched, Funny. Another, he touched another man's pliers. So... We got the uh, master links put in correctly, and now we have no rubbing issues. It's nice and smooth. So we're going to have to uh, now pull the chains apart. Oh. I know. And we're going to have to weld in these engine plates completely. Yeah. And uh, also get it back together. Can we make one big chain guard? Well, we gotta uh, take this thing down. We've got to run it to the other shop and we gotta finish welding up the frame yep. uh, more solid. And while we're over there, we're gonna figure out the seat positions and make some brackets for the seats too. Toes. <laughs> oh, it looks so much more real now that it's on the ground. It looks... <laughs> Ike, do you want to try to get behind him? Oh, <laughs> this thing is just tacked together, dude. Yeah, I don't want to. Okay. No more weight. Should I? Ike, do you want some handlebars, dude? Okay. This is going to ride so goofy. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, We're figuring out where we need to reposition the seat to. Yeah, we need to spread the seats out a little bit more. I'm thinking if we bring... What are they, social some, distancing? Some bars back here. And then we just split the difference between the very front seat and this seat for the rear. I'd feel a lot more comfortable. You gonna feel a lot back there when you're when we're driving. You hit all the. It's gonna be bouncy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the compromise is moving the rear seat as far back as we possibly can on there, and then splitting the difference in the middle seat. And that's that's all we can just, really do. Just to make us more comfortable on this bike. Yep. I together. swear, if if we hit the brakes the way they were, all three of our helmets, <laughs> all three of our helmets were gonna hit each other. I never considered how embarrassing this thing is gonna be to ride. I never, that never, that part never dawned on me. Oh yeah, as we take off, we all just I was, wave and ride off into the just, sunset. Oh. Okay, so I think what he's talking about is when you steer, the frame goes up and down. It's not. No, it just it just doesn't feel very like when you make left and right turns it keeps helps keep balance. This thing feels totally different. Oh whoa. Okay. I said there's a mixture of unbalance and you feel like you got a fish tail going on. Cause like you steer and you straighten up. The rear is still kind of coming straight. It's going to be a very interesting ride. So you just saw Charles weld up the engine plates and we made some adjustments to the steering rake. 
because uh, this mini bike had a huge problem with how it steered. I'm gonna roll a clip and it's gonna show that this thing was borderline unrideable. But the guys cut the tack welds holding our rake in place and they rammed it into the wall and gave us less rake. And they're gonna test it again to see if it's better. Ready? Ludicrous speed. All right, I gotta fire it up. <laughs> Definitely better. So you can actually ride it now. Yeah, I think so. It, it looks much better. It looks better. Feels better. Yeah, I think it's better. So we originally added all that rake for thinking it would give us high speed stability, yeah. which it may have. May, maybe. But it was unrideable at low speed. Yeah, so hopefully this is enough rake for high speed. So we're moving on to the throttle cables on this. Uh, this is what I'm thinking. We've got three engines. We got to tie them all together into one uh, throttle. So I'm gonna have a throttle cable coming up to the frame, throttle cable coming up to the frame, and we're gonna have the cables attached to the frame, and we're gonna have all three cables tied together with a barrel nut going to one cable. And uh, as long as we've got everything like in sync, we should be good to go. So what I've been doing is I've been welding in the cross braces for our seats. Yes, three seats. This one's gonna be kind of interesting. As you can see, it's a little different. This is the front bracket. I've gotta make something to hold the back of the seat here, the front, middle, and rear. And I need to drill the holes in the center and I think we're gonna roll it over there and finish up welding. Yep. Just to make sure we have, a, we want the seats to stay on. We want a good welder. We're getting close to a ride though, boys. Getting yes. It, we'd be 10 minutes out if this had one engine and one seat on it, but we have three of everything. We decided to dangle that thing off as far as we could just so we could have as much room as possible for three grown men on one mini bike. <laughs> yeah, and with two so. people sitting up front, sitting over the rear tire. It's not going to be a problem. It's not going to be bad. So the front mount goes there. What we're going to do, Charles, is fish mouth a piece from here to up there and then have another sideways oh, bracket. okay. So just like that. So just two pieces of tubing and then a piece of flat bar in between them. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Yep. And then we can figure out if it needs to go from there, but that's that's the concept. All right. That's what well, I'll doing. get I'll get two roughly five inch pieces fish mouthed, and we'll we'll get to trimming. Sounds good. All right, thank you. All right, and that's what we got. Looks pretty good, man. Not bad. Uh, I I cut the angles wrong. You know, I'll be honest. Underneath the seat, but I'm certified gap welder. I'm not worried about it. Good. I think that's got to come up just a little oh, bit more. Oh, just a little bit. Okay. But, yeah, I'm uh, glad I I can't see it from here where I'm holding it. So thank you. Yeah, man. I think it's ready for attack. Okay. Boogery. Yeah. So here's a behind the scenes look at the eyeball edge at cars and cameras. So you see the seat? We have it more or less lined up with, of course, the camera's not completely centered up. You can see the gap between our fork tubes is about the same. Then you come down and you look at those two triangles that our new tubes make with the rest of the frame and that cross piece up there. They look about the same. And I think our rear wheel is actually offset a little bit and that was throwing me off before. But other than that, man, it looks dialed. Good. And that's a behind the scenes look at well, I mean, how we, we build get, pretty much everything. Yeah, what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. See, you can weld. The beads aren't as pretty, but you can weld really good with this. If, I mean, basically, you gotta keep the metal clean and more heat and more wire than a normal MIG welder with gas. And this stuff works. Oh, look at that. You can see me through it. <laughs> if you have a go-kart or a mini bike at home, you know that lining up the sprocket and the chain can be tough when you're tightening down your engine. Try three of them. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ike has been working on our throttle cables. Mm -hmm. So he's got all three going through one piece of angle iron he welded in through a barrel nut 
and that's gonna grab the Every front night. one. Yeah. Hey Charles, can you please come over here and tighten this up? All right. Now we just Look. hose clamp that somewhere, or uh, what? How they're not all gonna be synced though. Or? Why not? Okay. I oh, see yeah, them I all moving. Just... They're all moving. Look. <laughs> Look at them. Yeah, yeah. No, it's simple to adjust, isn't it? Yeah, it should be. Hold on. Pull on it. Pull it. Ah! <laughs> They're all wiggling. <laughs> oh, and they all look pretty close yeah. to... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we're good. Really Sweet. Good. I'm God. thinking... Uh, so, it sounds like a snowball, a snowball fight out there with the snow falling off the roof. Man, I want to kind of want to go out there and look at it falling. I wonder big sheets coming off the roof. You gonna get cut in half? <laughs> oh yeah! Holy moly! <laughs> I'm glad I moved my truck. I'm afraid. Yeah, well, let's see. Southerners see snow for the first time. 2022, colorized. Oh. <laughs> Do you need a funnel, bud? Yeah, hold on. Oh going? my god. What the heck? <laughs> I think it's uh It was in there. <laughs> it was in, it was in there. Do you want a funnel, dude? <laughs> it's like you're good Look now. The worst part, it was that just makes me feel really dumb. Who is it? I think there just, was... Just to let y'all know that's snow falling off the roof. I think there was pressure in the tank and I released it and all the gas came out. Yeah. Sounds... They they only fill up so fast because they got them screens in the uh, tanks. So, who's going to be the first one to try it out? Ike, I feel like you're always the man for the job. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he's going to hot dog something that's not ready, Dig it hot dog. Oh, yeah, yeah that's him. usually me. Yeah. That's up to you, man. If you don't feel like doing it, I'll. I'll I mean, I, I don't care. I'm fine with it. It's whatever. Unless, Charles, you want the maiden voyage. There's no brakes on it. That's the only thing that. I'm going to want to go hog wild on it. And we don't have any brakes. We don't have brakes. Oh. oh. Yeah. All right. We're going to start off with. Just Two. firing up all the engines right here. And that's three. <clears throat> you ready? I'm ready. Let's see. Uh, fuel <laughs> is on. Choke is on. Choke is on. Choke is on. One at a time. Yep. I'm going to start with this one. We'll watch out so don't get an elbow in the face. Yeah, it's just burnout machine, man.
Uh, whoever rides the back of this thing is gonna be soaked. Yeah. Well, that does it for this episode of Cars and Cameras. First test drive on the three engine mini bike. We have a lot of tuning to do on this thing. You can catch it here on the channel. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. Holy moly. I don't have a flathead. No, you don't. Old man winter. Oh, that was smooth. Smooth like, like stone. <laughs>